Hello everyone, it's Matt from Akuma Mods back again with a how-to slash tutorial video. Uh, today we're going to be talking about resin exposure settings and how to dial in your bottle of resin. Uh, and what that means is basically how to get your uh, print to be the best of the best. Um, obviously you still need to do some supports and uh, proper angles. But this will at least elim eliminate one issue that people constantly have where they see prints sticking to, to the FEP and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's get into it. So, um, right here we have two different examples of resin. So, uh, we have our typical Chinese resin. This is a Eco resin from Anycubic. And uh, we also have some higher higher end uh, resin from 3DRS, and um, this is just their standard resin. Nothing, nothing too fancy about it. But uh, the thing that's that really sets them apart is their exposure times. So that's what we're really focusing on when we're talking about this: is how do we determine what is the best exposure time for my resin? Uh, and what that means is basically how many layers do we get to um, to print on and that it will keep sticking every single time layer to layer. Because if we're underexposing, that means it's too jelly-like. That means we're not curing it and it's not hardening enough. But then there's also overexposing that, um, you know, you're basically, you can still get a good print out of it, but... Um, you might have some layer lines or something else happening to it and uh, your print might come out a little too uh, too hard or too brittle and that can be a huge issue as well. So today we're going to talk and show you exactly how to dial in your resins and get, uh, get them within a certain range to where you can print consistently with it. Um, and if you want to, you can go even above and beyond that and tune it even more uh, so you get the best printing experience with each and every bottle of resin. So, uh, for example, like I said, we have the uh, Anycubic uh, Eco resin here. That's, it says its normal exposure time is anywhere between 3 and 15 seconds. Uh, then we also have some higher end resin that has an exposure time between eight and 10 seconds. So you can see right there, those are two vastly different exposure times. Uh, the higher end resin you're always gonna see is have a, uh, a little better exposure time in between you know one and three seconds. And the Chinese ones can have anywhere between 10 uh, to 15 seconds, depending on what resin you're using. Um, also, if you're using some clear resin, that's going to be even higher than that. So uh, they basically put these out, and it's a general uh, exposure time on all their bottles of resin. So whether it's a solid color or a clear color, you're pretty much going to have the same 3 to 15 seconds on every single bottle. So that's why they kind of do it. It's just like a generalization for them. Um, but also, that goes into fact that, you know, the reason why we do a resin exposure calibration test is you may think like, okay, I'm good. Uh, let's just go in the middle and print from there at eight seconds. While that might work, you might be underexposing a little bit. Things like that, you know, where, you know, your supports are disconnecting from the prints and you're not sure why. Well, you might be underexposing that because there's a layer of resin that's sitting there not being properly cured, so it kind of pools up a little bit. So this is why people pull their hair out a lot uh, when they are resin printing because they don't quite understand that while they might be in the range of their resin, um, it might be just a little bit underexposing or even overexposing if you know things are too brittle and they snap in into pieces so um so yeah let's get into uh she two box and i'll show you guys exactly what i'm talking about in terms of uh how to set this up so all right so right here we have our resin xp validation file and i'll leave a link for this on where to download it from thingiverse and basically this tells you everything that uh you want to look at so we have some lines here on the left hand side 
Uh, then we also have the Resin XP2 validation um, uh, raised up uh, lettering. That'll come into play. Then we have the middle here where the two teardrops meet. And then we have our circles on the top and our, what is that, uh, opposite of those circles. So outside circles that are going to be on here. Now most of the time these are going to be filled in because I do print these flat. We're just going to use this to dial in. You can raise it up if you want to, but this is just going to mean that you're going to take a lot longer to dial in your bottle of resin. So just be mindful if you do that. Um, but that will allow these holes to not be filled in entirely. So, um, And then we also have a plane here that goes up uh, on a pitch. And I believe that pitch is 2.200701. Uh, in terms of the, that pitch. So we're not going to be too worried about that, but we are going to look at all of this information as a whole. Even this outside line that goes around the entire print is going to play in. So everything that you see here on this is going to have some sort of factor on your decision on whether or not this is going to be a good exposure time. So not saying that everything is going to be perfect uh, when you dial it in, but you can get it very very perfect if you spend the time to do that so um, in order to change the settings on this we're going to go ahead into your system settings and uh, we're actually going to use the Creality LDR uh, because that's what you guys are going to be mostly using for uh, for the most part now I usually have my layer height set at 0.5 unless I'm doing a super high detail print uh, that's going to be at point, uh, 0.5 most of the time. Now, if you change any of these settings at any point in time on this left column here, you're going to want to change and redo your resin exposure settings uh, because you're going to change the entire outlook of the print. So everything's going to skew your information. But for the most part, I keep all this other stuff exactly the same throughout my entire prints. The only thing I change is the exposure time on my... Uh, on my resin that's it so with this we're gonna go off the basis that you're gonna be using Chinese resin any cubic elegu shine sing isan Chinese uh, whatever it may be that you're going for uh, so right now this exposure setting says that it's anywhere between 3 and 15 seconds so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and delete this and I'm gonna change that exposure time to 3 seconds we're gonna go ahead and click the X, and we're gonna go ahead and slice. Gives you all your information of how long it's gonna take, roughly 10 minutes for it to print. We're gonna go ahead and save that, and then we're gonna click back. We're gonna go back into settings, and we're gonna choose a number in between three and 15 seconds. I'm just gonna choose eight, you can choose seven, doesn't matter, as long as it's within that uh, three to 15 uh, range. So I'm just gonna go right in the middle of it at eight seconds, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go ahead and slice it. It's going to give us our time frame. We're going to save it. We're going to go right back. Then we're going to change this to 15 seconds. And basically save it or slice it and then save it again. So in total, three prints are going to take us roughly about a half hour because you will have to print these out, wash them, and cure them to get the absolute best results on that XP validator. Um, if you just take them right off the plate and you wash them off and you don't cure it, it might skew the results. So make sure you do the proper steps in order to do this correctly. All right. So with that being said, okay, so we have our three prints. You can dial them in. I'm going to show you guys some prints that I have right here that are, um, they were printed on the Creality LDH, which has a monochrome screen. So the exposure times are going to be vastly different. Um, but we're basically going to take those times and show you exactly what happens on every single one. So I'm going to start from the lowest at 0 0.5 seconds per layer, all the way up to 2 seconds per layer. Uh, so we have uh, 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, 1 1.75, and two seconds. So these are all the same exact style prints, uh, same th same settings everywhere else, but it's going to be um, our 
Only thing that we changed is the exposure exposure time. So let's go ahead and put up our close-up camera and I'm gonna try and show you the best way that I can on what these prints are looking like. So for example, just keep an eye on what this print looks like in Cheetu Box right now with all these lines and everything and the teardrops, you know, just meeting the Resin XP um, uh, lettering and everything. Just keep an eye on that and verify, all right, this is what I'm gonna be looking for. So now we're gonna go ahead and show you exactly what it looks like to overexpose and even un underexpose a, uh, a print or your resin even. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you guys exactly what's happening here. So here is a exposure test setting at 0 0.5. Now, like I said, most of the time you're gonna be looking at the middle of this print and you're gonna see that this teardrop is not even connecting to each other. But not only that, you can clearly see that like, this is not even coming in. Most of these lines are not even here. It's just an all out disaster. So that means that we are way underexposing because we're losing all of our little lines here and everything like that. So this is not a very good print, okay? So we're gonna go up and we're gonna change that to add 0.5 seconds and we're gonna take a look at it okay so this one as you can see is vastly better you have all of your information on the sides here on both left and right and then you also have like your outside line that's still kind of you know a little underexposed but our teardrop is looking pretty good so that means we're getting close to where we need to be as well as our resin xp val validation um lettering is coming in pretty good. But as you can see, there's still some room for improvement on the right hand side here. Again, that might be a bed leveling issue um, that you can easily find out if all your prints are coming out on, um, on this side and they're kind of warping on the left hand side here. But for the most part, this print looks pretty good. So we can go out and base off of that. So we're gonna leave that at one, okay, as a pretty good print. Now, here's a 1.5 print. So as you can see, it's getting considerably better with our, uh, our times and everything on this, uh, on this matrix. So you can clearly see that there's better lines here and better lines on this side as well, as well as all of our lettering is coming in very, very well. So this is getting much more improvement in total of what we're looking at. So again, I stepped that up because I saw, all right, 1.5 is doing pretty good. And uh, let's go and step it up to 1.75. Again, we are vastly improving the way that it looks in terms of everything and what it's supposed to look like. But again, now we're starting to overexpose it. As you can see, some of these lines are kind of merging to each other. So again, we're kind of overexposing this print a little bit. So we're, we know we're going a little bit too high here. So just to be on the safe side, we went up to two seconds here. And as you can see, all these lines on the bottom here are pretty much merging together. So that means we are way overexposing. Plus also, if you look at the, uh, the teardrops, they're basically blending together. So that right there tells you that this is way overexposed. We don't need this. So we're gonna go right back down. So again, our 1.75 is looking pretty good, but again, we're kind of overexposing a little bit. So we're gonna go right back down to our 1.5. That's looking pretty good right there. So where it's kind of overexposed, but not too much. Now we can also step this down to a 1.25 and that might be a little bit better. Unfortunately, I didn't do that. So we're just gonna go back down to the one, one second and we're gonna compare the, the one second to the 1.5, okay? in terms of what we see on each and every one of them, if I can get this together. Okay, so as you can see, 1.5 and one second are vastly different compared to what's happening. So if you're looking at this side of the print on each one of these, okay, right there, you can see that at one second, you know, we're losing a lot of exposure on the, uh, on the, the side of the print here. So whereas 
1.5 second, we kind of had that exposure, but we are overexposing a little bit. So really, to be in all honesty, um, the best course of action in this setup would be to print this at 1.25 and see where we go from there. And you kind of dial it in from there. So I've done these, what, five prints. So this on a normal printer is going to take about an hour to do all this. So right there, that tells me a good area of where I need to start with on my resin. So again, this is on a monochrome screen. So this is going to be a quarter of the exposure time than what most people are going to be using. Um, you know, for the LDR, <coughs> excuse me, um, you're going to be, you know, somewhere between the six and eight second range on these, uh, these prints instead of one and two second or half a second, whatever. Uh, so that's pretty impressive. Uh, if you guys are looking at monochrome screens to regular screen printers uh, in terms of that, but that's a whole other thing that we can get into. I just more or less wanted to show you guys exactly what's happening in between each and every print. Um, so in this case, we found out that our, our sweet spot is gonna be somewhere between the one second and 1.5 second for each layer of exposure time. So um, I'm gonna keep playing around in that and you can literally dial this thing in to an exact science to where let's say it is 1.25468 in terms of seconds so it can be like a half of a, a second a half of a millisecond into uh, 0.26 seconds so uh, it can go even that fine tuning not saying that you have to go into that but if I were to go ahead and set a print right now, and I set that at 1.5, um, then I'd be pretty good. I'd be actually pretty perfectly. I think that that print would print very well on 1.5. Now again, like I said, I can dial this in even more because in all reality, I'm probably gonna be looking at 1.3 seconds on this because we know at one point one second it's too underexposed. We're we're losing a lot of um, detail on the left hand side of the print, and 1.5 is overexposing. So if I brought that down 0.2 seconds, 0.2 milliseconds, sorry, um, then we're probably going to be right in that sweet spot range at 1.3 seconds. So um, that's a pretty good uh, piece of information to know. Uh, if you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and leave them below. I'll leave links for the uh, the resin exposure uh, calibration tool. And if you really want to, I'll leave uh, links to the 3D resin solutions, the uh, AnyCubic uh, Eco. Uh, that's a like a lime green that I have. And then, of course, the eSun White, which we used for our uh, validation matrix. So... I'll leave those all down below. Obviously, they're going to be affiliate links if I have them. And, uh, you know, that way we can support the channel and I can do some more content like this. But uh, that's pretty much all I got for you guys. Like I said, if you got any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and leave them below. I hope this video helped you out in the way that, um, you know, I see less people having issues where my print's sticking to the vat. Well, I'll be honest here. You don't need rain -X or any special thing. Do a resin calibration. It's going to help you. It's going to be your winner, winner, chicken dinner for that. So, um, again, I hope this helped you out. Uh, if you, uh, if you want to chat about it, go ahead and hit it below. And uh, until next time, guys, happy printing.